Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at how you might get assets that you either bought from the asset store or have pre-existing in your project into Yumi. So for this first example, I'm going to use this Voxel Town Pack. It's only $1 from the asset store. And as you can see from this image, it looks kind of perfect for Yumi. So let's download that. And import it. And let's take a look at how we might get this into Yumi. So Yumi comes with a tile converter. It's under Windows, Uponic, Tile Converter. The tile importer is used for bringing your own artwork in from a single uh, file with multiple objects within it. The tile converter is used to try and convert existing assets. Not all will work. We might take a look at some examples of why that's so. But it, it does a good job of um, importing assets that are, that are in a sort of fairly standard, regular format. Because assets can be built in any kind of way, it can't be guaranteed that this converter is going to um, make them work straight out the box. But what I want to do is, um, if we find assets that are a little troublesome uh, to import, I, I can take a look at that and work on the converter and try and make it work better for a much more general set of assets. Anyway, let's take a look at getting a Voxel Town Pack into Yumi. So the first thing we need to do is find our prefab source folder. So we're going to Assets, Voxel Town Pack. There's a prefabs folder here, and this contains all of the prefabs that come with this asset. Then we want to set where we want to put the destination for our Yumi uh, tiles. So let's create a new folder of prefabs. And let's create a folder called Voxel Town. So now we're asked for the tile set name. Let's call it Voxel Town. And now we've got some values that we can use to adjust the import. Um, I'm not going to play with those at the moment, and let's just see what happens when I hit Convert Tiles and try and get those into the Map Editor. So it's exported 19 new objects. If we open up Yumi, let's dock it over there, add it, and go to Voxel Town. You can see that everything looks like it's imported really nicely, but once we enable Yumi, we can see that the scale is absolutely massive. So let's go back to our tile converter. Let's just drop that in there. So the first thing we need to look at is the scale. Now, this is a little bit of an eyeballing exercise. Um, it's hard to tell what the scale is. I mean, this is a 40 by 40 grid, so maybe it's it's like a 30 by 30 or something. So let's start by scaling it to 0 0.05 and see what happens. Simply convert the tile set again. And that updates the model in the scene. Now let's go top down. It's still too big. So let's try something else. Let's try 0 0.3. That looks about right. So let's try painting some of those. Let's just take this tile. In fact, let's find the road because we can see if there's anything wrong with how it connects. So it's, that's a little bit too small now. So maybe it's 0 0.35. Okay, let's just turn this into there. So that's looking that's looking perfect actually. But uh huh. If you go down here we can see that it's hovering. Um you might want that, but um it's better to have things aligned to the grid. 
So what we can do is we can play with the offset values here. So it looks like everything's okay in the X and the Z, but it looks like we need to bring it down, maybe half a track piece. Um, let's try that. And now we've got it perfectly aligned to the grid. So we can start building with this if we want. There's some great little models for just testing out the editor with. The world's worst road. So that's how we import the voxel town assets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find another asset and let's try importing something different. Okay, so now I've got this nature pack extended, which is a free asset. And again, if we look at the screenshot, we can see this is the kind of thing that um, Yumi should just eat up. So let's download this. And let's import it. That's quite a lot of objects. Okay, so again, let's find the assets and they're in nature pack extended. Looks like that's a folder. Let's set up the destination. Let's put them again in prefabs and let's call this nature pack. We'll call the tile set nature pack. And I'm going to reset these values because I, uh, I, I want to see where we are with a straight import. So let's convert the tile set. Okay, and if we go open up the map editor again, add Yumi, okay, it's there, so let's enable Yumi. Okay, again, we can see that these tiles are oversized, not quite as big as a voxel pack, but let's, let's just drop one and take a look at it from the top. Okay, so we can see this is one, two, three, four, Four, five, four, three and a half, effectively. So I'm thinking we need to rescale by something like zero point three, 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 three. Uh, that should get those roughly about the right size. So let's convert those again. I feel like I should be whistling or something. I can see the tiles are going over actually, that's interesting. I'm guessing that I'm still counting up on files that are not actually importing that might be in that folder, so I'll take a look at that before we release it. Okay, um, back to the map editor. They're imported but they're offset, so it looks like we need to move them over by 0 0.5 and in the Z by 0 0.5. So let's try that. We should probably check what they look like as well if they're hovering. And they are. So let's move them down by 0 0.5. 
and hopefully the last time we re-import these. I love these uncomfortable silences. Okay, let's go back to the map editor and take a look. And they're still not quite right. Uh, oh, no, I think that was just the brush was still previewing the previous import. So if we draw a bunch of these, they look like they're imported perfectly. So let's put a stream through there. Um, so this is interesting because uh, we can talk a little bit about using layers. This uh, this tarset obviously has a lot of different objects in it, but are built around a kind of one by one by one cube. So if we wanted to drop this rock on there, we could uh, set that to layer two. What else have we got? That's interesting. It's like a fence. And some trees. It's a great little asset, actually. Let's add that to another layer so we don't delete those. Yeah. Okay, so that's um, that's a nature pack imported. Um, so like I say, the, the converter can be a little bit hit and miss. It depends how the assets have been built. Um, often they're built for just simply hand placing and dropping in a scene. And sometimes I've there's been a couple of task sets I've tried that have not really conformed to um, any kind of grid size. And those are going to be tricky um, to get working. However, there is a workaround. If we take a look at how a track piece tile. I keep calling them track pieces because back when I did worked on Croc series, for some reason we called them track pieces even though it was a platform game. The same way we call the scripting language a strategy language. It was a different time. So if I keep calling things track pieces, it's because I'm having flashbacks to the 90s. Um, but if we take a look at how one of these uh, tile pieces is constructed, we we have a parent object which effectively acts as its pivot. Um, but what we have underneath is you can see how our rescale on the conversion is applied to the child here. Now, if we had a, a piece that we thought we needed to offset always, we could actually offset it here, reapply the prefab, and that should, should, untested, um mean that it, it keeps that in oh, down to the right there but it keeps that offset so you can go in and hand tune these things if you've got um, a set that you've imported and you've got maybe one or two prefabs that just aren't behaving right you could go in and manually tune those and then just apply the changes to that prefab and as long as you don't re-import again that will stay with that um, that tile set Okay, so hopefully that's shown you how to take assets you might have already built for your game or might have bought from the asset store and, and how you get them into Yumi. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.